Welcome back. Good morning, San Diego. The 2020 presidential election is right around the corner, just over 100 days away. Many people across the country believe there is a clear winner. However, author and political commentator Tom Del Beccaro is joining us via Skype to explain why the election will be closer than the polls suggest. Good morning, Tom. How are you, sir? Great to see you guys. How have you been? I've been well. So I've been looking at the most recent round of polls from even like places like Fox. Biden's winning in every uh, toss up state. He is even leading in Texas. This election is over, Tom. You say? <laughs> well, I've been saying for quite a long time that this is going to be a very close election. And all those polls you're alluding to are illogical. They're not even logical within their own framework. So let's keep some certain things in mind. First of all, no president since 1988 has gotten 53% of the vote. Nobody. And yet these polls act like that's completely possible. Why hasn't any president gotten 53% of the vote? Well, I wrote a book called The Divided Era, and that's how divided we are. And if you look at the current Gallup polling, you see approval ratings for the president very high among Republicans and very low among Democrats. There's an 89 point spread. When Obama got 51.7% vote, there was on election day an 84% spread. If you put those two pieces of information together, you get a close election here. Now, does anyone think that they're excited to vote for Joe Biden? No, the Washington Post poll says that only a third of those voting for Biden are excited about voting for Biden. Two thirds are voting against Trump. Well, that's low enthusiasm for Biden. You put all that together and we're gonna have a typical divided era, fairly close election. But Okay, so folks aren't going to pull the lever, and I, I know I date myself when I say that, but you know what I mean. People aren't going to vote for Biden because they're crazy enthused about him. But just judging from the mainstream media and folks I talk to that are on the left side of the aisle, they are really interested in voting against Mr. Donald Trump. So isn't that enthusiasm just in a different direction? Well, yes, but it's never been enough. If you think about it, in 2012, the anti-Obama sentiment among Republicans was super high. Only about 9% of Republicans liked him. The same happened with Democrats against Bush and Republicans against Bill Clinton. But they all won. Why? Because historically, not liking the other guy isn't a good enough reason. You may dis... Look, if you call the person up and they're sitting on their couch and they say, are you going to vote against Trump? and you're a Democrat, you're gonna say yes. But sitting on your couch isn't voting on a day in November. This election's gonna come down to a few battleground states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. It's gonna come down to independents who look at the violence in this country today and turn away from it and don't blame it on Trump. They don't blame it on the police. 64% of voters think that this is out of hand and defunding the police is wrong. And Joe Biden says that we should take funds away from the police. So there's many factors here. The economy will be improving by even more by then. This is going to be a close election. Is And I think it's more likely that Trump gets 53% of the vote than Biden because there's never been a candidate who won for president whose enthusiasm rating in a poll was 24%, very enthusiastic to vote for Joe Biden. Never. All right, can, can you teach me something? Explain to me all these polls, and, and everyone's talking about the sample, sample size, that they're asking a ten, the, the Democratic sample of, of registered voters that they're polling is 10 points higher or 10% bigger than Republicans. If you're running a poll, why would you use those equations? Wouldn't you want a more accurate, don't you want your poll to be accurate? Or is it all about suppressing Republican voters? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Look, polling is an art, because what you're really saying is, here, you're either outright admitting that this is what you think it is today or what you think it's gonna be in November. When you see some of these polls are, are registered voters, they haven't done registered voting and given uh, polls for that in years. But if you do that, you're basically doing what you're saying, which is suppressing a vote. 
the major media, CNN isn't interested in the truth. CNN wants to project and help defeat Donald Trump. What you need to look at is Rasmussen and Gallup. Rasmussen's approval rating between Obama in 2012 and Trump right now are basically even. And, uh, and who won in 2012? Obama, 51.7, a very low number for a re-election. I'm not saying Trump's going to run away with this, but I know Obama, I'm, I'm sorry, Biden isn't going to run away with it either, especially after the debates. All right, Tom, we will keep this in our time capsule and uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll go back to it as we count down to the election. And if you're spot on, you'll hear about it I, I, in our next interview. I'll get to come back. Yes. And there'll be a little something extra in your check as well, Tom. Oh, you, well, I don't know. Am I getting a check? <laughs> Tom Del Vicaro, everybody, the author of The Divided Era. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. We'll talk again.